how large is large enough? The definition of limit says that to get within epsilon of L, I just have to go past the big nth term. To guarantee that you're within epsilon, how big does n need to be? We can actually compute this in some cases. Consider the sequence uh, a sub n equals n plus 1 divided by n plus 2. So what's the limit? The limit of this sequence as n approaches infinity is 1. Let me draw a picture of this. So here's a number line. Uh, let's put 0 all the way over here. Let's put 1 right here. And now I've got a bunch of terms of the sequence, right? So here's the first term, here's the second term, here's the third term, and so on. And as I go out further and further in this sequence, the terms get closer and closer to 1. And the question is, how far do I have to go out in the sequence to guarantee that I'm within some epsilon of 1? Now let's suppose that I want to be within a hundredth of 1. How big does n have to be? So what I want to do is find a value for big M so that whenever little n is bigger than or equal to big M, I get that the nth term of my sequence is within one hundredth of my limit 1. Right? This is telling me that the nth term is within epsilon, epsilon being 1 one hundredth in this case, of my limiting value 1. But I can rewrite this. Instead of writing it this way, I could instead write that a sub n should be between 99 hundredths and 101 hundredths. Now, to be between 99 and 101 hundredths is exactly the same thing as being within a hundredth of 1. Now I've got a formula for a sub n. So I could instead write this is 99 over 100. The formula for a sub n is n plus 1 over n plus 2 is less than 101 hundredths. So what I'm trying to do is figure out how big I need big n to be so that whenever little n is bigger than big n, I know that both of these inequalities hold, meaning that my nth term is really within a hundredth of 1. Well, one of these inequalities comes for free. This inequality here comes for free because n plus 1 over n plus 2 is always less than 1. Right? The numerator here is smaller than the denominator. So this thing being less than 1, in particular, this thing is less than 101 over 100. So I get this inequality for free. This inequality, however, requires a little bit of work. I could uh, solve here by, say, multiplying both sides by n plus 2 and by 100. And I'd end up finding that n needs to be at least 98. So as long as I choose a value for big N, which is bigger than 98, that guarantees that this inequality holds. This inequality holds automatically. That tells me that my nth term is really within a hundredth of 1. This is pretty awesome. Right? It's pretty cool that we can tell if you're past the 98th term in this sequence, then you're within a hundredth of 1. And there's something special about a hundredth. If you wanted to be within a billionth of 1, you just have to go much further out in the sequence, and then you'd get there, right? And no matter how close you want to be to 1, if you go far enough out in the sequence, you'll be that close. And that's exactly what it means to say that the limit of this sequence is 1.